Mr Speaker, the Financial Markets Regulators and KiwiSaver Bill, as well as the raft of other bills that we are looking at today, is uh, sponsored by the Commerce Minister, uh, Simon Power, who the previous Speaker uh, spoke so highly of, and it's very good to hear uh, Labor members speak so highly of uh, Government Ministers. A tremendous work programme and a tremendous commitment uh, that has been undertaken by the Minister and also by members of the Commerce Select Committee who uh, have the privilege of, in essence, reviewing the, the uh, engine room of the New Zealand economy in so many different ways. The Financial Markets Regulators and KiwiSaver Bill establishes a new financial sector regulator, the Financial Markets Authority, and makes some very important changes to the governance of KiwiSaver schemes. The overriding focus in the commerce portfolio is to restore investor confidence uh, in our capital markets after uh, the global financial crisis. One of the first uh, constituent inquiries uh, that I had as a new MP, the, the MP of New Plymouth, was when a retired couple came to me uh, and were surrounded by disaster that cost them not only where they had invested but also their own personal home. And uh, we have seen stories. Uh, and heard stories such as this uh, that have necessitated uh, such uh, an extensive review of the regulations surrounding uh, the financial sector. We often hear that classic phrase, the mum and dad investor. This essentially is the investor who uh, has a bit of spare cash being saved for retirement by a person who doesn't see investment as something that they are necessarily highly specialised in. And uh, coming out of the global financial crisis, uh, it's important to have uh, these improved protections for such investors. It's important to have them because these are imperative uh, for their future confidence and their ability to invest in New Zealand. And notwithstanding, uh, one of the things that we uh, did discover through uh, the process of uh, the Commerce Committee in looking at these bills was that investor education and awareness uh, is very important. Uh, it was last year that uh, Professor David Mays, who was the recently appointed Chair of Finance at the Order. Auckland Business School. Thank Courtesy you, is contagious. I continue. Uh, he recently said uh, that New Zealanders are average. Now, we don't like to hear that, do we, Mr Speaker, that we are average. But he was making a comment that we are average when it comes to financial literacy. A problem that wasn't unique to this country. Um, and he commented to say that a lot of finance company collapses occurred before the global financial crisis, which shows New Zealand was ahead of the curve on this one. But any company that indulges in risky finance gets into trouble when the economy turns downward. So, Mr Speaker, what we need to uh, understand and acknowledge is that this problem has been in existence for some time and that this country was in recession uh, months and even a year ahead before the global financial crisis uh, happened uh, around the world. We were ahead of the curve. That means our financial markets regulatory framework was somewhat fragile. Some would even say shonky at different parts and places. Uh, and all under the watch, even though, as some have made the comment, observed and wanting to be improved of the previous Labor government. Essentially, we were not fit for purpose. Uh, to trade in a modern world where opportunities are global but accountabilities are local. So investment into New Zealand Inc. Uh, needed to have uh, some uh, tremendous work done. A substantial disincentive for people to shift from a borrowing-based way of thinking which has dominated uh, New Zealanders this uh, last decade uh, to an investment-based way of thinking is a lack of confidence in a system that fails to ensure professional effective, ethical and accountable oversight of that system. When we try to convince New Zealanders to not invest uh, simply in uh, a housing market with money borrowed overseas, but to save and invest in our economy and our industries and our businesses, many people have asked the questions, can I trust uh, that investment to be protected? And it's important to acknowledge that, uh, that Following the introduction and the passing of these bills, 
that, uh, that we will have a framework, we'll have an environment that will encourage that level of confidence and see the capital base of our nation uh, be released more for business. Uh, even this morning, uh, Mr Speaker, as uh, we heard the um, financial review of NZTE, uh, the Chief Executive said, while we have enough market opportunity globally, we do not have enough companies of international scale. Uh, that are able to face and conquer the known challenges of size and distance. And so we need a stronger capital base that is going to enable our companies to internationalise, to be able to grow in scale and capacity, to be able to take advantages of the commodity boom that is happening around the world and to build the wealth of New Zealanders. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, this raft of legislation that has been sponsored by uh, the Minister of Commerce, the Honourable Simon Power, uh, is leading us in that direction and is a great step forward uh, for us, for our economy, uh, for the future success of all New Zealanders. Uh, I commend the bills to the House. Thank you.